hello there and uh, welcome to my youtube channel so uh, today i will be uploading a educational video on uh, the basics of waves in atmosphere and ocean uh, i feel that this is a very important topic because uh, the ocean and atmospheric waves are very important part of uh, weather and climate uh, so therefore i am just trying to give a, a very basic overview of how the waves behave in ocean and atmosphere and how they transfer energy and uh, how they uh, are important for uh, genesis of a weather system. Uh, so this is very uh, prelimin preliminary video. Uh, I am not invo involving a lot of mathematics or equations uh, because a uh, lot of these waves which form, uh, they are governed by a set of mathematical equations uh, but we are not going to cover that. Just the basics of what are the different types of wave, how they behave, uh, and uh, what are the time scales and uh, uh, how they help in formation of weather systems. Okay, so this is the only thing that I'm going to cover in this video. I hope this will be useful. Uh, so please give your feedback. All right. Uh, so the first thing first, uh, what are waves? So in a very simple uh, layman language, uh, waves are nothing but they are disturbances in ocean or atmosphere and they repeat themselves in space and time. Uh, and obviously they transfer energy from one place to the other uh, as they move uh, in whichever direction they are supposed to. So this is uh, so this uh, drawing here is just a very simple schematic of a wave as you can see it's a disturbance which has an amplitude and it just keeps moving uh, from left to right. Okay? Uh, and a very simple uh, wave characteristic equation uh, to define a wave is just that it is a let's say you take a sine wave so you can have any uh, perturbation or disturbance A will have some amplitude A0 and uh, uh, a sine wave kind of a pattern uh, which will be governed by the wave number. So this is the how many number of waves are there. Okay, That is the wave number and the frequency. So in uh, time, how, how frequently do they uh, repeat? Okay, So these are the, uh, so the wave number and frequency are very important for any given wave. Right? So this is the basic definition of a wave. So uh, how do they affect the weather? Well, so as you all know, we have a very uh, complex uh, uh, dynamics. So you have uh, on, the, on the topmost level, you have the annual cycle, which is nothing but the equatorial trough or the ITCZ. So ITCZ is an annual, it, it, it keeps moving annually. Uh, and that's uh, as it moves northwards, it uh, brings us the Indian monsoon. We know that, right? And uh, due to the movement of ITCZ, you have these ENSO cycles and you also have the Madden-Julian oscillation. Okay. So these are kind of the synoptic skill um, cycles okay. or <clears throat> in other words, they are the tropical variability. All right. uh, so this is connected to cloud clusters. So all of these, the annual cycle, ENSO and Madden-Julian oscillation, they are all uh, helping in formation of clouds. Okay. So the middle man is the wave. Okay. So these waves interact with interact with the Madden-Julian oscillation or uh, the perturbations from the ENSO or perturbations from uh, equatorial trough or the ITCZ and they help in formation of these cloud bands. Okay? So if in the absence of these waves, you will not have uh, any interaction between these uh, tropical variabilities, uh, uh, the modes of tropical variability and hence you will not have any cloud formation. Okay? So the waves are a very very important middleman that connect seamlessly connect these modes with the cloud banding. Right? So that is very important to understand. So that's why we have to understand that the waves have a very important role to play in controlling the weather and climate. Okay. All right. Uh, so what are the different types of waves? Uh, so I'm only covering some major uh, waves here. There are many, many different types of waves. Uh, there is a, a whole book on uh, types of waves, but here they're only covering the waves which are important for a, um, uh, in, in, which are most important for weather patterns. So the first one is a Kelvin wave. Uh, the Kelvin wave is affected by Earth's rotation and uh, which is basically nothing but the Coriolis force and you have different types of Kelvin waves, equatorial Kelvin wave, coastal Kelvin wave and equatorial Kelvin wave itself has many um, um, branches. Uh, one of the famous branches is the convectively coupled Kelvin wave uh, which helps in uh, formation of uh, uh, convective clouds. All right? Uh, then you have Rossby wave which is also affected by Earth's rotation and you also have equatorial Rossby wave and you have the mid-latitude Rossby wave which is nothing but a jet, jet stream. Okay, we all know what is a jet stream. It is the fast moving 
uh, perturbed uh, stream of air in the middle atmosphere okay and uh, you have an internal gravity waves uh, these are special types of waves which are not affected by rotation but they are affected by the stratification which is nothing but the density gradient that is present in the atmosphere right as we all know that there is a density gradient which is present uh, so that can also generate waves so these internal gravity waves are not very specific to equator they can occur anywhere okay they can uh, occur even at 5 degree latitude 10 degree latitude 15 degree latitude so the, uh, that is not a very specific to equator equator itself okay all right <clears throat> so going further into the basics of waves so uh, a wave is mostly characterized by two of its features one is the phase speed another is the group speed so what I have shown here in green lines is the phase speed of a wave and I have two different waves I have taken two different waves wave 1 and wave 2 and if you see each of these two waves only difference is that the amplitude it's this is the same going from minus 1 to plus 1 but the frequency is different okay so these are two different waves the reason I have taken two different waves is because in atmosphere and ocean you don't have a single uh, wave mode right you have multiple wave modes you can have multiple types of waves with different frequencies and different wave numbers which can come and interact with each other okay so what happens then is this is what happens when different waves interact with each other so now if you these two waves combine okay they will give a different type of wave which is a combined wave which has a different amplitude and different frequency okay and this is exactly known as a dispersion relation so the wave disperse so they they interact with each other and they disperse the energy uh, in a different manner okay so this is a why uh, the group group speed is important because now if you see these waves are not going to move with a phase speed which is the face of this wave but they are going to move with a group speed and the group speed is basically very different than the phase speed of the wave so this is the group speed of the wave okay group speed obviously group speed can be found out by taking the uh, frequency divided by wave number correct so the wave number is very different here frequency is very different here so group speed of this combined wave is going to be very different compared to the phase speed Right, that is very very important to understand right so what happens then is if you go into the next step so these are the different types of waves and here I have only taken three different waves which have a phase speed of some let us say value x okay so this this has a phase speed of x this has a space phase speed of x this has a phase speed of x now all these three waves combine uh, or interact with each other then they give this wave okay which is very important right because now this is the group wave okay or the combined wave that we just talked in the previous slide so this group wave becomes very important because if you see just follow the green dot and the magenta dot so magenta dot is here the green dot is here so the phase speed is the green dot and the group speed is the magenta dot so you can clearly see the difference in the phase speed and the group speed right the phase the phase speed is moving to the right whereas the group speed is moving to the left and this is exactly the reason why we need to look at the group speed okay because the group speed is the one which is going to transfer energy so the direction of the group speed is what matters so how are the groups of wave traveling because the face of the wave is just one one wave right but the group wave is the wave which is the combination of all the waves and hence it's the dispersed wave and that is what is going to carry the energy so we always are interested in how the group velocity is moving okay how the group velocity is moving very very important and the relationship between the group wave and the phase uh, sorry the relationship between the uh, group speed and the phase speed is nothing is nothing but the dispersion relation all right so i am not going to get into the mathematics it's a very complex math this is the only mathematics that i have included in this slide uh, so you have a set of equations using the set of equations you can actually get the dispersion relation and once you have the dispersion relation you can check whether the uh, group speed and the phase speed are same or different okay which brings me to the next slide so what are what is what are dispersive and non-dispersive waves so you have a group speed and you have the phase speed right so if the group speed is equal to the phase speed then the wave is non-dispersive which is exactly here so you will see that the blue and uh, so what the uh, red and blue are moving at, at the same pace but if the group phase speed and group speed are different then you will see that they move at different right so you, uh, different speeds see so this is moving faster than this and here this is the negative direction so the group velocity is moving left whereas the phase velocity is moving right but like I said you should always focus on this blue dot because that is what is going to transfer the energy all right so one important aspect of dispersion is that if the waves are dispersive then their amplitudes will grow okay if a wave is non dispersive then their amplitude amplitude will not grow so they will just move as a constant amplitude wave whereas 
uh, wave which is dispersive will amplify as it moves okay so that is a big difference and that's why dispersive waves are very uh, tricky to handle compared to non dispersive waves okay because one thing is the group velocity is not same as the phase velocity so if you look at the phase velocity then you are not capturing the energy carefully for a dispersive wave because like i said you have to look at the group velocity which is the blue dot right the, the group velocity is, is the direction in which the energy is going to propagate all right uh, but for a non dispersive wave it's slightly easier because both are the same so it doesn't matter which dot you look at you are going to get the energy direction all right and the other second thing like i said the amplitude is not going to vary all right so it's not going to amplify as it moves downstream okay so that is very important all right so uh, i will uh, stop this video here this is the part 1 uh, i will uh, uh, go to the next uh, few in the next few slides i am explaining different types of waves which are kelvin wave rossby wave and internal gravity waves that is part 2 which will uh, come which will follow soon